In a conventional model of the internal structure of the Earth, the elements are normally viewed as a series of near-perfect spheres that start with the inner core of the Earth being mainly iron with some nickel around 5000 degrees C, which normally would be enough to actually melt the iron, but the extreme pressure at that depth means the inner core is solid, probably in the form of crystalline iron. The inner core is estimated to be about 760 miles across. Around this very hot iron inner core is the outer core, which again is mainly composed of iron and nickel, with some lighter elements like oxygen, carbon, silicon, even sulphur added in. This outer core is anywhere from 3000 to 5000 degrees C, but unlike the inner core, the outer core isn't solid and moves around. The outer core isn't really what you call a liquid either, it's kind of thick molten sludge. The outer core is a 1400 mile thick shell around the inner core. This moving sludge is what actually creates the Earth's magnetic field. Above the cores is the mantle, which is made from silicate rock, which is where the majority of the mass of the Earth is actually located, about 1,800 miles thick. It's generally regarded as solid, but the rock can and does move, if only relatively slowly. Now, the mantle temperature varies considerably with depth, so near the outer core, the mantle will reach nearly 4,000 degrees C, Getting close to the upper edge of the crust, it can be just over 200 degrees C. The final, most varied layer of the Earth is the crust, which is the rock structure we're most familiar with, which is highly varied in mineral content, and also varies considerably in actual thickness. As I said, this is a conventional model of the internal structure of the Earth, but the Earth is a little bit more complicated than this model assumes, and it fails to account for the gravitational and magnetic anomalies which can be detected at various places around the surface of the Earth. Now, for a certain explanation of these, we have to look at some odd structures with an even odder title, actually called Large Low Shear Velocity Provinces. These provinces are basically clusters within the Earth that occur within the mantle around the boundary between the mantle and the outer core. There are two known provinces, one beneath Africa and one under the Pacific. Since these provinces are far too deep to measure with most geological equipment, we have to rely on seismological measurements to identify their size and position. However, we aren't talking about a couple of small bumps on the sphere the outer, of the outer core. These provinces are huge, over 1,000 miles across and nearly as far in height, representing trillions and trillions of tons of rock. The rock in these provinces is chemically and structurally different from the surrounding mantle. This brings us on to the next major question. Where did all that rock actually come from? Now, currently there are two major competing ideas about the origins of these provinces, fairly reasonably divided from, from above and from below. Taking the from below first, these provinces could be possibly the result of a kind of subterranean volcanic eruption from the core, pushing debris up into the mantle. But the huge volume covered by the provinces doesn't match up well with how our understanding of the movement of rock under great pressure and temperature actually works. But our understanding is so far fairly limited, so the models could need more data to say if this theory is actually viable or not. From above, though, has one more fairly dramatic theory, one more widely accepted view. Let's start with this widely accepted view, which relates to subduction. A subduction is a fairly common occurrence where one plate on the surface of the Earth crust moves under another, passing underneath its force deeper into the earth, is normally assumed to be melted down and then recycled in the form of magma in volcanoes. However, there's a possibility that part of the subductive material can actually become pulled deep in the earth and create these provinces. A possible source for the material being subduction being very ancient sea floors of the earth. Now, the other option is far more ancient and a violent one. Some astronomers believe that early on in our solar system, an early form of our Earth was in collision with another body, which has been called Thea. The resulting impact basically destroyed Thea, and the remnants of the impact came together to form the Moon. Now, it's also possible that the force of the impact may have left a lasting mark on the actual structure of the Earth, especially deep down within the Earth, with these provinces basically being left behind remnants of Thea, driven deep into the Earth by the huge force of the impact. And what of the reality? Underneath the Earth isn't as simple as it first seemed. It may tell a lot more about the Earth's history when we go investigate it properly. 